Hi, another video from Fast Tech. Uh, in this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to fix an Xbox One S uh, with a black screen or an Air E1 or a green screen problem. So normally, what happens is if the hard drive's failing or um, if if it has failed already, normally you'll see a black screen when you turn the Xbox on. Like the light will come on, but nothing will show up on the TV. In other instances, you might get an error code that starts with an E. It could be error E100, 102, 103, and so on. Uh, in other instances, uh, when the hard drive hasn't totally failed, but is, it's about to fail, you'll see uh, a green screen with an Xbox One loading message, but uh, it wouldn't go into the home screen. Uh, and so what happens is the hard drive fails and then we have to replace the hard drive in this instance uh, I'm gonna be putting a link in the description for the hard drives. We sell them pre-programmed uh, and pre-flashed ready, ready to go uh, You can't just use any uh, laptop size hard drive because it's not gonna work uh, They have to be prepped uh, for use in an Xbox one. We sell them pre-prepped uh, on our website uh, So you don't have to do any of the steps to program the hard drive what you're also going to need is a USB stick. You need a USB stick uh, to uh, put the, the OSU1 software on it, which I'm going to be also putting a link in the description for. Uh, and I have, uh, I'm going to be putting uh, instructions on how to prepare a USB. And, but in certain instances with the hard drives that we sell, they already ha have the OSU1 software on them. So in most cases, you don't have to, um, you wouldn't have to, you would not have to use a USB stick. But in some cases, you might have to, to prep. You might have to need. You might need a USB stick with the software loaded on it. Uh, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that also in the description box. Uh, so let's get started. So here's our Xbox One. Uh, we're going to start disassembling it, uh, and we're going to look at the back here. Right below the serial number. There's a sticker that we're going to have to remove. This is, uh, well, it used to be the warranty sticker. Now, uh, Microsoft, since an FTC ruling in April of 2018, they can't discriminate against you uh, if you have warranty. They have to prove to you why they're voiding your warranty instead of just you removing the warranty sticker and voiding your warranty. But anyways, uh, I digress. We're going to release this clip by sticking a knife in here. We're trying to separate the bottom plastic piece from the from the top, there's also clips on the sides. Okay, okay. There's more clips in the middle. Just stick your knife in there. We sell this knife on our website as well. It's a credit. It's a folding knife. It turns into a card you can fit in your wallet. It's also a fully functioning knife. And then the last clips are going to be on the sides. The last ones are on the sides here. Stick your knife in there and then just separate the bottom from the top like this. Okay. Then you can just pull the bottom panel off like so. Okay. Now to get to the hard drive, we're going to remove the green screws. We only have to remove the green ones. These are the long screws that hold it in the case. You're going to need a Torx T8H screwdriver, which you sell on our website. I'm going to put a link in the description for that. I'm going to use my automatic screwdriver to save time. Okay, once we remove these green screws, we're going to separate the back piece like this, <laughs> Whoop. and it's going to come right off. Okay, and we're going to lift this piece off right here, it's just going to come off like this. Okay, this is the hard drive, this is what we're trying to replace. Okay, to get the hard drive out. There's a couple of screws that hold it in place, and there's a couple of screws that hold the power supply in. We're going to have to remove the screws that hold the hard drive in and one or two screws that hold the power supply in. 
uh, because it, it's otherwise it's going to get in the way. So we're going to flip the console over again. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and remove these torque screws that I'm removing right now. I heard the power supply drop and on the other side, oh, the hard drive dropped out. There you go. Once you remove the screws, um, the hard drive should just drop out like this. If it doesn't, you can just lift it out like so. Okay. We're going to go ahead and remove it from the motherboard by lifting uh, the SATA uh, cable and the power cable. Okay, this is the hard drive. Um, we sell these on our website. Um, we sell it with, with the enclosure, which is this plastic piece right here that it sits on or you can buy it without the enclosure. Um, there's Torx screws that hold it in, which you can, uh, uh, you can use the Torx T8 screwdriver that we saw on our website to release these screws. Take the hard drive out, put a new one in, and then you just install it back. Okay, so to get the hard drive out of its enclosure, we're gonna remove the Torx screws. So you remove the screws, the hard drive is just going to come out. I'm going to remove the connector by pulling on it like this. And now uh, we can put a new hard drive in. So this is our replacement hard drive. We sell this on our website. Uh, these ones come pre-programmed because uh, uh, this is very important, guys. These hard drives have to be flashed and partitioned uh, correctly. Otherwise, they're not going to work. If you just order one from Newegg, um, or Amazon and try to install it, it's not gonna work. Uh, and then you're gonna be commenting in the videos telling me you got the error E102 message and that's because your hard drive's not programmed. These ones that we sell on our website, they already come pre-programmed so you don't have to worry about anything. You just install and you're good to go. Okay, so we're gonna install our new hard drive in, uh, in the enclosure. Okay, before we do that, we're gonna install the connector on it like so, and install the, install the screws that hold it in place. Okay, once we install all the screws, we're gonna put the hard drive back in. Okay, goes in like this. Connect the SATA and the power connectors. Okay, make sure everything sits right. There you go. <clears throat> then we're gonna install the top. Then we're gonna flip it over and install the short screws that we removed that hold the hard drive and the power supply in place. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over, install the top case back on. The front goes in first and then we're just gonna line up the back. Like so. Okay. 
Then I'm going to install the long green screws in. Okay, then finally the bottom cover. We're gonna make sure that the front lines up like this. Click the front in place, flip it over, make sure same thing in the back. All the clips should line up and click like this. When all the clips are lined up, we're done pretty much. I'm just gonna put my FastTech warranty sticker on here. We're gonna install our FastTech warranty sticker on here because this customer does get a warranty. There's one more step that we have to do uh, and we're gonna need a USB stick for that step. Uh, I'm gonna show you that next step uh, right now. Okay guys, so for the next step, um, I've stood up the console like this uh, so, it's, so it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have our USB uh, plugged in. Uh, the instructions to make that are in the description box. We have our new hard drive installed. Okay, so the next step, we're going to have to install the software from this on the hard drive. Uh, and we're going to do that uh, by holding the eject and the sync button. Okay, we're going to hold them down. And then we're going to press the power button and we're going to keep holding the power button down. Okay, the console's gonna turn on. Okay, we're gonna hear one beep, and we're gonna hear a second beep, and then we're gonna release. We're just gonna wait for the Xbox to restart. It's gonna restart and hopefully start installing the software. It's going to stay on this screen, it might restart a couple of times, uh, and then eventually it's going to start installing software. And if you've done everything correctly, it should get to this screen, and then you're just going to connect your controller, press A, and follow uh, the on-screen prompts. Uh, it's, a, it's going to ask you to connect to Wi-Fi, which you're going to, uh, and then you're going to connect to Wi-Fi, and it's most likely going to download an update. And after that, uh, you're ready to go and ready to game. Uh, don't forget to comment and like and subscribe to our channel and also click the bell next to the subscription button because just subscribing is no longer enough uh, So do click that bell if you want to get notifications from us uh, And do check out our website if you need any Xbox one parts uh, at www.fasttech.ca Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell next to the, next to the subscribe button if you want to receive notifications uh, and don't forget to like our videos and comment on them. We try to respond to as many comments as humanly possible. Uh, and also don't forget to check out our website if you need any parts, tools, or repair services if you don't want to do it yourself at www.fasttech.ca. And I'll catch you in the next one.